This is devotional number 324, and today's date is September 7th, 2017. We have been looking at Romans 12, 2 this week, and I'll go ahead and read that. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Today we want to look at the phrase that ye may prove. The notion of proving in Romans 12, 2 involves trying or testing or examining approving something and in this case it is the perfect will of God. The following verses contain this Greek word translated as prove which is Strong's number 1381 and we'll note in these passages that the examining has to do with either the Bible trying or testing uh, one soul by God for the true Christian's spiritual benefit. For example, in Philippians 1.10, we find this declaration, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Also, 1 Thessalonians 5.21 exhorts, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. And in 1 John 4, 1, we find this warning. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Uh, these citations encourage the child of God to depend on God's word by obeying it, and hence proving that it is indeed 100% reliable, 100% of the time. It is also extremely useful for distinguishing truth from error, as we just read in 1 John 4, 1. It is a wonderful blessing indeed that God does not allow his children to wander very far into error, but he corrects them and he leads them into truth as they continue uh, in his word, as we read in John 8, 31. John 16, uh, 13 through 15 is another great encouragement for each genuine child of God. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. These next two verses also contain the same word prove as found in Romans 12 2, but they focus on God trying or testing his children to see how they react under painful measures. And this is especially true today as we are living uh, in this time of fiery trial. 1 Peter 1 7 asserts that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And 1 Thessalonians 2, 4 concurs, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. To use a figure of speech from gardening, we are being pruned for the purpose of bearing more fruit, as we learn from John 15, 2. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, 
that it may bring forth more fruit. We note the same truth also expressed in this beautiful passage in Psalm 26, verse 2. Examine me, O Jehovah, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. We've been considering so far the Greek word for prove, Strong's number 1381 in Romans 12, 2. But now uh, what I'd like to do is switch to its parent word or root word, which is approved. Strong's number 1384. Uh, this word is rendered as approved six times and once as tried in James 1, 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. The other passages pinpoint those who are approved of God or saved, and in one instance, uh, approved of men, as stated in Romans 14:80. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Uh, for brevity's sake, I'll just look at one other verse, which is 2 Corinthians 10, 18, a very significant verse at that. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. The word approved, uh, Strong's 1384 is derived in term from another root word uh, that is translated as think or seem. This is Strong's 1380. And this word is full of different shades of meaning. Uh, I, 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 I like to look at these words or, or, or uh, uh, speak of them as being pregnant with meaning. And in preparing these lessons, I was particularly struck with the eternal contrast between unsaved man's thoughts and God's righteous thoughts, uh, as in these next three verses. Matthew 3, 9 testifies, And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Uh, John 5.39 also commands, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Uh, Luke 8.18 also speaks about faith as it relates to salvation uh, during the day of salvation. Take heed therefore how ye hear, for whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have. The attitude of humility is set forth in the scriptures as one of the hallmarks of all who have been redeemed. And we'll just look at a few uh, verses. 1 Corinthians 3.18 explains, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. Uh, likewise, 1 Corinthians 8.2 declares, And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. And 1 Corinthians 10, 12 warns, warns, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. The infinite chasm that exists between God's thoughts and man's is addressed in Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith Jehovah. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts.